Hello, everybody. It's Professor Kai here. We're talking about Design for Adoption today. Uh, this is a part of the Design for X series for ENG 1102, and this is part one of our three-part talk. All right, so welcome. Uh, since we're talking with uh, engineering students in the in the realm of engineering design, let's uh, let's start with something I think all of us can agree on. That is the idea that technology is a driving force of engineering design and that our goal as engineering designers and right, we're talking about engineering design here is that we're going to that we want to use technology to serve human needs and uh, this is something that's you know if we agree on that goal then we have to say a, a engineering design has no impact if no one ever uses it right that's just a truism based on the goal of engineering design is to use technology to serve human needs, then if nobody, no human use the design that we create, it's not very useful. So today we're really going to be talking about how do we create designs that are impactful, right? So to do this, we really have to study the business and psychology of engineering design to help us design our, uh, our product, design our services, design our applications. So. Uh, today, in uh, really in three parts, we're going to talk about what is innovation and uh, why are some innovations not adopted and, uh, and how do we design for adoption. So in part one, we're going to focus on the questions of uh, what is innovation. So the thing is, when we ask the question, what is innovation, experts actually can't agree on a single definition but there are some common themes right there's something new about innovation so whether this is it comes from new ideas uh, creative thoughts new imaginations the innovations are new that's by definition I think that is something um, every expert would agree on what experts can not really agree on is what form exactly does innovation take right so it can take the form of a device right and it could be a method, it could be a process, it could be a system, and it can also be offered as a product, a service, or a system of services and products, right? And uh, it can even be other things, because at least uh, in my opinion, innovation shouldn't be so restrictive. So this is these three, uh, these three bullet points here are something that experts don't fully agree on, right? What uh, experts also don't agree on is how much technology content has to be in a innovation. And uh, typically innovation uh, in the market environment we are in today um, can be financially rewarding. Again, not always the case and uh, experts don't necessarily agree on that point either. The first point experts agree on, this very last point they do agree on, is innovations create value for people, right? We're talking about whether these are stakeholders, customers, or users, right? It gets to the point is that an innovation only becomes useful when it is adopted by people. That is, people see this thing that's new, they use it, right? Go back to this very first point, and this is a point if you remember one thing from the lecture is this engineering design has no impact if nobody uses it so if we take a design thinking perspective on innovation right design thinking would say and then most of you have seen this from our other lectures and and uh, I've given a talk on design for humans and uh, to to the classes and uh, we talked about this a lot Right? Innovation lies at the center of feasibility, viability, and desirability. Something that creates value for people, and that is, so that's desirability, that is viable from a business sense, and perhaps even from an ethical sense, like this is something that we should do, and then feasibility, technology. Really, feasibility is can we do it? Uh, viability really is about should we do it and desirability is the question of uh, you know would people want it 
So I want to go through some examples because I said innovation comes in multiple form, right? This is a, one of the most well-known and most well-adopted innovation smartphones. And uh, obviously, uh, it's well known that iPhone from Apple started off. This is a product and uh, it's a device that is, uh, that is sold as a product, right? What it did was it transformed the way people used phones. That's what is new. The technology, obviously, in this iPhone is new, at least in that day, day and age, when, when it first came out in, I think, 2007, it's completely new. But what, as, a, as an innovation, what it offered, the value, is that it offered people new ways of interacting with their phones. That's what made it valuable. That's what made it an innovation. Look at something that's very different, blockchain. Blockchain. We're talking about the blockchain technology itself as an innovation. That's a method, right? It's not a product per se. It's a method. Blockchain is a method of recording information that makes it difficult for the system to be changed, hacked, manipulated. It allows for distributed information storage, right? And what made this particular innovation valuable is that it enabled many technology and applications to be built based on it. Right, so we can talk about cryptocurrency, but we can also talk. That's the most well-known one is cryptocurrency, right? We're talking about Bitcoin, we're talking about Ethereum, and many, many other cryptocurrencies. And uh, but it's also really valuable when you start thinking about digital identity, right? Think about having your driver's license and having your, uh, say, vaccine certificate stored in your phone, and that is stored, distributed in a way across the cloud that can be authenticated so no one can fake it, right? And, uh, and even people are talking about using blockchain as the basis for secure voting platforms instead of extremely insecure and we've if you read the news over the past few uh, past decade or so, there's all sorts of issues with uh, putting votes in, uh, in in voting boxes, right? So, so can can we use this technology, this innovation, to make that process easier? Well, if it does, that creates value, right? What's important in this for blockchain compared to the iPhone is that blockchain is a valuable innovation because it empowers other valuable innovations to be built on it. it may, it's the applications of this technology that makes it valuable. A, a third one, also very well known, also very different, right? Amazon is, it's a process, it's a system, it's a service, right? It's really, um, we say Amazon is a ecosystem of commerce that's built on top of technology, right? What it creates value, is they create values for both the buyers and the sellers by a creating a single virtual marketplace and uh, and by making their experiences of selling and buying easier and uh, and and you see that the iPhone the uh, the blockchain and Amazon are very different type of innovations now we're gonna look at something that's really challenging is this innovation right uh, most of you would be have seen this photo, right? It's everywhere. This is uh, by the artist Banksy, who we don't actually know who Banksy is, just goes by the name Banksy. And uh, it is something new, yes. Now, the form is where we get challenged and expert would have arguments around because it's a mural, but it also takes many other forms. It's not a device per se, but the idea of Banksy is so powerful, it gets replicated. Right? And uh, you can go on Etsy, you can go on Amazon, you just type, type bank, Banksy, you get replica, uh, you can buy just the picture itself, the digital replica of the pictures that you can print, you can buy uh, t-shirts, uh, you can buy your own murals of it that you can hang on the wall. Right? Now, is it valuable? Well, it has massive cultural impact, right? It's actually so massive, the cultural impact so big that my eight years old daughter actually read about Banksy in one of her story books, right? That's how, well, how much the impact is. So, the, and, and potentially, and, and I think the purpose of at least most Banksy's art is to inspire social change, right? So these are its value. Now, is Banksy innovation? I don't know. That this is Banksy would lie on the borderline of uh, many art experts would disagree over, right? I'm, I'm showing you this example to give you a sense of how many different ways we can be innovative and um, well make a difference in the world as uh, as designers. 
Uh, so to end this first part, I want you to think, have a little bit of think and reflect, right? Let, let's, let's think about one innovation in your life that you care about. Now ask yourself these questions. What is new about this innovation? What is the form of this innovation? Is it a device, a method, a process, a system? Or is it something else, right? Is it a product, a service, or is it something else? And the important one, they're all important, but this one particular for the purpose of design for adoption is really think about how does this innovation create value for its customers and for its stakeholders. And uh, this is the question that we're gonna be looking at for the next two parts. And, uh, and we'll see that if we, it's kind of the nut to crack. Right? If we figure out how to create value for our customer and stakeholder, we know our innovation has a better chance of getting adopted. So with that, I will see you soon in part two.